Hey, beautiful people. It's your girl Tu Yen, back with another video. Today, we're diving deep into the world of food safety. And trust me, this is some tea you need to sip on. Many of us are all about that leftover life. Quick, easy, convenient, right? But here's the thing. Some foods are just not meant to be reheated. I know, I know, it's a tough pill to swallow, but it's for the sake of our health. According to diet experts, reheating certain foods can lead to some not-so-pleasant consequences, like harmful chemical changes and bacterial growth. We're talking about potential health risks that nobody wants to deal with. So, let's break it down and uncover the top three foods you should never reheat. First up on our hit list is spinach. I know, I know, spinach is a powerhouse of nutrients, but reheating this leafy green is a big no-no. You might be thinking, how can something so healthy be bad for me? Well, let's dive into the science behind it. Why? Let me spill the tea. Spinach contains a naturally occurring compound called oxalic acid. This compound is found in many leafy greens and vegetables, but spinach has it in higher concentrations. Now in moderation, oxalic acid isn't a big deal, but when you reheat spinach, things get a little dicey. The heat from reheating can cause chemical changes that make oxalic acid more problematic. Reheating causes the oxalic acid to crystallize. These tiny crystals can accumulate over time, especially if you frequently consume reheated spinach. These crystals can then build up in your kidneys, increasing your risk of developing kidney stones. Kidney stones are not only painful, but can also lead to more severe health issues if left untreated. Ouch! Nobody wants to go through that kind of pain. Trust me, it's better to avoid the risk altogether. And if kidney stones weren't enough to scare you off reheating spinach, here's another thing, nitrates. These compounds are naturally present in spinach and other leafy greens. Spinach contains nitrates, which are generally harmless. In fact, nitrates can be beneficial for your cardiovascular health. But guess what? When you reheat spinach, those nitrates can convert into nitrites. This conversion happens due to the heat and the presence of bacteria that can thrive in cooked spinach. Nitrites are known carcinogens, meaning they have the potential to cause cancer. Long-term exposure to high levels of nitrites can increase your risk of developing various types of cancer. So, by reheating spinach, you're essentially increasing your exposure to these harmful compounds. But wait, there's more. The dangers don't stop at oxalic acid and nitrates. Spinach is also susceptible to bacterial growth, particularly a nasty little bugger called Listeria monocytogenes, or Listeria for short. This bacteria can be found in soil and water, and it can contaminate spinach during the growing process. Listeria can survive at low temperatures, even in your fridge. This means that even if you store your spinach properly, the bacteria can still be present. While initial cooking can kill off some of the bacteria, reheating spinach might not be enough to eliminate all of it, especially if it hasn't been stored properly. The bacteria can multiply during storage, making reheating less effective. And trust me, you don't want to mess with listeria. This bacteria is particularly dangerous for pregnant women, newborns, the elderly, and individuals with weakened immune systems. This bacteria can cause a serious infection called listeriosis, which can lead to fever, muscle aches, and even gastrointestinal problems. In severe cases, it can spread to the nervous system, causing headaches, stiff neck, confusion, and even convulsions. So the next time you're thinking about reheating that leftover spinach quiche or dipping into a container of creamed spinach from last night's dinner, think twice. It's better to eat your spinach fresh or properly cooked the first time around. Your kidneys and your overall health will thank you. By being mindful of how you handle and consume spinach, you can enjoy its benefits without the risks. Stay safe and eat smart. Next up, let's talk about a beverage that many of us can't live without tea. It's a staple in many cultures and a daily ritual for countless people around the world. Whether you're a fan of black tea, green tea, or herbal infusions, there's something so comforting about sipping on a warm cuppa. Each type of tea offers its own unique flavor profile and health benefits, making it a versatile and beloved drink. But here's the thing, reheating tea, especially black tea, can turn your soothing beverage into a bitter disappointment. Many people don't realize that the process of reheating can significantly alter the taste and quality of the tea. Why? Because of these things called tannins. Tannins are a type of polyphenol that are naturally present in tea leaves. They play a crucial role in the flavor and color of the tea. Tannins are naturally occurring compounds found in tea leaves. They contribute to the tea's astringency, which is that dry, puckering sensation you feel in your mouth. 
They're responsible for giving tea its characteristic astringent taste. This astringency can be pleasant in moderation, adding complexity to the flavor. When you reheat tea, you're essentially extracting more tannins from the leaves. The heat causes these compounds to break down further, intensifying their presence in the tea. This excessive extraction leads to a more bitter, astringent flavor that can leave your taste buds feeling less than impressed. The once delightful beverage can become almost undrinkable. And let's be real, nobody wants to drink bitter tea. It's a far cry from the soothing experience we seek when we brew a fresh pot. But the bitterness isn't the only reason to avoid reheating your tea. There's another, more concerning issue at play. Remember how we talked about bacteria in spinach? Well, bacteria can also be a concern with reheated tea. It's not just about the taste, it's about your health. While brewing tea at a high temperature initially kills off most bacteria, letting tea sit at room temperature for an extended period can allow dormant bacteria to become active again. This is especially true if the tea has been left out for several hours. Reheating the tea might not be sufficient to eliminate these reactivated bacteria, potentially putting your health at risk. The microwave may not heat the tea evenly, leaving some bacteria alive. Reheating the tea might not be sufficient to eliminate these reactivated bacteria, potentially putting your health at risk. This can lead to foodborne illnesses, which are definitely not worth the risk. And trust me, a cup of tea isn't worth risking a nasty bout of food poisoning. Symptoms can range from mild discomfort to severe illness, depending on the type of bacteria present. So, the next time you're craving a warm cup of tea, brew yourself a fresh pot and enjoy it while it's hot. Freshly brewed tea not only tastes better but is also safer to drink. Your taste buds and your tummy will thank you. There's nothing quite like the experience of savoring a freshly brewed cup of tea, knowing it's both delicious and safe. Chapter 3. Rice, Rice, Baby, The Silent Danger Lurking in Your Leftovers. Rice is a beloved staple in many households, but it comes with its own set of risks that are often overlooked. Last but not least, let's talk about a staple food in many cultures around the world, rice. From Asia to Africa, and even in Western cuisines, rice is a versatile grain that finds its way into a myriad of dishes. Whether you prefer white rice, brown rice, or any other type, rice is a common ingredient that many of us consume regularly, or even exotic varieties like jasmine, which is known for its fragrant aroma and slightly sticky texture, or basmati, which is celebrated for its long, slender grains and unique flavor. Rice is a versatile grain that can be enjoyed in countless ways. It can be the star of a dish or a humble side, but it always plays a crucial role in our meals. But here's the thing, rice, especially cooked rice that's been left at room temperature, can harbor a particularly resilient type of bacteria called Bacillus cereus. This bacteria is not just a minor inconvenience. It can pose serious health risks if not handled properly. And this bacteria is no joke. Bacillus cereus is a formidable foe in the world of food safety. Bacillus cereus produces spores that can survive even when rice is cooked. These spores are incredibly resilient and can withstand the high temperatures that typically kill other bacteria. These spores are heat resistant, meaning they can withstand high temperatures and survive the initial cooking process. This makes them particularly dangerous because they can lie dormant until conditions are right for them to multiply. Once cooked rice is left at room temperature, these spores can germinate and multiply, producing toxins that can cause food poisoning. The longer the rice sits out, the more time these bacteria have to grow and produce harmful toxins. Symptoms of Bacillus serious food poisoning can include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. These symptoms can appear within a few hours of consuming contaminated rice and can be quite severe. Reheating rice might kill off some of the bacteria, but it won't eliminate the toxins that have already been produced. These toxins are heat stable, meaning they can survive the reheating process and still cause illness. So even if your reheated rice looks and smells fine, it could still make you sick. The toxins produced by Bacillus cereus are not detectable by sight or smell, making it difficult to know if your rice is safe to eat. To minimize the risk of Bacillus serious contamination, it's crucial to store cooked rice properly. Proper storage is key to preventing the growth of harmful bacteria and the production of toxins. The key is to cool the rice down quickly after cooking and store it in the refrigerator within two hours. Rapid cooling helps to prevent the spores from germinating and multiplying. Storing rice in an airtight container in the fridge will help to slow down bacterial growth and reduce the risk of toxin production. 
An airtight container also helps to keep the rice fresh and prevents it from absorbing other odors in the fridge. When you're ready to eat the rice, make sure to heat it thoroughly to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius to kill off any potential bacteria. Using a food thermometer can help ensure that the rice reaches the proper temperature or 74 degrees Celsius to kill off any potential bacteria. This step is crucial to ensure that any remaining bacteria are destroyed and the rice is safe to eat. So, the next time you're dealing with leftover rice, remember these tips to stay safe and avoid about a food poisoning. Proper handling and storage of rice can make a big difference in preventing foodborne illness. Your gut will thank you. By taking these precautions, you can enjoy your favorite rice dishes without worrying about the silent danger lurking in your leftovers. There you have it, folks. Three foods you should think twice about reheating. Remember, our health is our wealth, and taking these small precautions can go a long way in preventing potential health risks. Always be mindful of food safety guidelines, store your leftovers properly, and when in doubt, it's always better to err on the side of caution. After all, a little extra care in the kitchen can save you a whole lot of trouble in the long run. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and hit that subscribe button for more health and wellness tips. Stay safe, stay healthy, 